I feel like I've got no actual idea what I'm doing here. Those stories that I wrote, I must have just got lucky, I suppose. I don't even think they're actually good. What even is writing? Every time I write a book, I do it differently, and it's really hard every time. Why would my opinion about anything matter? Sound familiar? That's imposter syndrome speaking. I got a great big dose of it this week when I got an email notifying me that a flash fiction I wrote had reached the shortlist of the Bridport Prize again. The last time I did it was in 2011. The reaction to that kind of good news should not be number one, checking to make sure that the email is genuine, and number two, checking to make sure that they didn't email the wrong person. Yet, those are the exact steps I took upon hearing this good news because imposter syndrome had kicked in, as it so often does. But as writers and storytellers, we do not have to let imposter syndrome win. In this video, I want to go over my approach to keeping imposter syndrome at bay so that it doesn't creep in and try and ruin nice things for you because it will if you don't protect yourself from it. I'm making this seem more scary than it really is. Possibly the worst thing about imposter syndrome is that it makes you feel alone. Like everybody else knows exactly what they're doing and you don't and you're the odd one out. But in my experience, that just really isn't the case. While people might not necessarily feel inclined to talk about how they feel like a huge fraud, I think it actually is a pretty common feeling. I think one reason why it can be so common among writers is because it's really hard to validate yourself as a writer, basically because most of what goes into it is so subjective and down to taste. One person might really love a story that you've written while another person might loathe it. And then if you're anything like me, you'll obviously choose to think only about the person who loathes a story and not the one who loves it. And that's assuming you get any feedback at all. If you've ever sent work away, a story to a journal or a manuscript to a literary agent, you're very unlikely to get any feedback. In fact, you're quite unlikely to get any response at all. And bear in mind, this might be something that you've put months or years into writing and you send it to multiple places and you hear absolutely nothing from any of them. It's almost logical at that point to start thinking about the work that you've sent off differently, to start asking yourself, was it actually good in the first place? Am I not hearing anything back because it's really terrible? And is it really terrible because I don't know what I'm doing? It's like a terrible fake confirmation bias and it gets even worse. I think another unfortunate thing that imposter syndrome brings writers is this need to compare themselves with others. You look at traditionally published writers who are selling loads of books or indie or self-published authors that are selling loads of books or have tons of followers and you think, well, that's it then. That's what happens when you're good at this. If I was good at this, I'd have that. I don't have that, so I must conclude that I'm terrible. I've said it before, but comparison is the thief of joy. Number of books sold, number of followers, number of words written, all of that stuff definitely has value. But if your numbers aren't as high as that, it doesn't mean your work has any less value. Firstly, who knows what the future might hold? One day you might have as many books sold or as many followers or words written or whatever, and if so, great. But secondly, those things are far from the only measures of success for a writer. The most satisfaction I feel as a writer has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It's when I give somebody a piece of work to read and they enjoy it and they ask to read more. That's kind of proof that I can do what I think I can do. It's almost an antidote to imposter syndrome. The doubting voice in your head telling you that you're a fraud and that you can't really do something will have a much more difficult time arguing against someone else telling you that you can do the thing. The key to beating imposter syndrome as a writer is to remember why you're writing in the first place. For me, that might be just to give someone an escape from a bad day at work or a bad situation in their life, or just giving someone a story that they can be excited to read. So when imposter syndrome does kick in, I think about that, the times people have said they've enjoyed my work, or when a piece of writing I've submitted to a competition has got put through to the next level by somebody I don't even know and have never met. If imposter syndrome has its hooks in you, don't try and fight it with positive thoughts because it's really hard to actually believe them. And don't just try and ignore it and hope it goes away. Instead, fight it with facts. A great exercise I've recently learned about is to make a list of all the good things you've achieved with your writing and read over it often. Contrast all those doubts with real tangible things that you've succeeded at and achieved. It doesn't have to be competition successes or books sold or publishing credits. If it is and you've done those things, that's great, but it's only one way of looking at it. Do you really think there's no value to the amount of hours you've put into your writing, words you've put down, 
books you've read, videos you've watched, research you've done, of course there's value to that. All of that stuff matters a huge amount because you've bothered to put the time into racking up all of that experience. Record all of that stuff, write it down, keep it somewhere and read it often. That way, when imposter syndrome does come a call in again, as it always will, read that list and see if you can argue with a single achievement on it. You won't be able to because you're not a fraud. You did all that stuff. And another thing, don't get into this pattern of looking at all of your achievements as bare minimums or easy stuff either. Push out that voice in your head that says, yeah, but that's just easy. A lot of people could do that. A lot of people probably could write stories, but they don't. You do. A lot of people probably could send those stories out and be vulnerable and ask for feedback on them, but they don't. You do. A lot of people could probably fail at something and choose not to give up, but to try again and do it better the second time, but they don't you do. Your achievements are not just measured by external validation, there is far more to writing achievements than just numbers and sales and prizes. In my opinion, the most important writing achievements are those ones that we manage to get done in the quiet hours sitting alone at our desk, or by scribbling something on a notepad while we're on the train. Those words that we finally manage to get down despite having a million other things to do. These are achievements that don't just click into place one day when you get an email. These are things that build over time, slowly, until one day we realize just what it is that we've managed to accomplish. These are the things that no one can really help you with, that you just have to figure out on your own. There's no prize for any of that stuff but you should absolutely take credit for it. You have to be able to acknowledge or accept those quiet accomplishments. Take a compliment from yourself if you can't take it from somebody else. I'm not there yet. Imposter syndrome still bothers me, but I make a note of the things that I achieve and I try and read it. So record that stuff, write it down. Otherwise your achievements will slip past you and you'll fall back into this pattern of thinking you've achieved nothing so you must be an imposter. Fight that with facts. And if you want some help or some backup with that, come and join our community of storytellers in my free Discord server. It's full of writers that share work and talk writing and support each other. It's open to all ability levels and we'd love to see you there. As always, my aim with this channel is to support other writers and to help them develop their writing as I develop mine. I want to help you tell your best story. So if you want to be a part of that, consider hitting the subscribe button down below for more videos like this every week. I want to say thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.